What's up, everybody? It's JT Sports. I'm at you guys with another seven round NFL mock draft. Now, before I begin, make sure to like the video and subscribe. Upload NFL videos daily. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video. And if you don't want to miss a video, make sure to hit that bell icon. So let's get into it. Green Bay Packers seven round mock draft. Continuing this series, trying to do a mock draft for all 32 NFL teams. And I still have a pretty long way to go. And the Green Bay Packers, man, these guys have had a lot of turnover this offseason. First, they got rid of Mike McCarthy. He went 6-9-1 with the Green Bay Packers this past season. And to be honest, I feel that firing was a long time coming, to be honest, because I've been knew about the beef that him and Aaron Rodgers had going on. But, I mean, the way that this season unfolded, it went really, really bad. And pretty much the Green Bay Packers made a decision. Of course, they're all you're always going to go with the quarterback over the head coach, and that's what they did. And I mean, I feel bad for Mike McCarthy the way that it went down, but I mean, when you hear about the beef that they had going on, it's just something that was restricting the team from moving forward and having success. I mean, he didn't really know his exes and nose like that. He was getting outwitted by. Aaron Rodgers, um, Aaron Rodgers kept on audibling out of the plays and stuff like that. So it's, it was just a whole entire mess. They decided to move on. But the interesting move was that they decided to hire Tennessee Titans off of the coordinator, Matt LaFleur. Now, I'm still scratching my head because I thought they would probably get a guy who would be more innovative. As an offensive coordinator, Matt LaFleur, he didn't really do nothing at Tennessee to really impress me that was really innovative besides just run the ball a lot, and that's pretty much it. But somebody let me know in the comment section down below if I'm wrong about that. But they had a pretty good free agency. I mean, they signed Preston Smith. They signed Zadarius Smith, who was pretty good in my opinion. They also signed the former Chicago Bears safety, Adrian Amos, who was probably on his way to becoming a top five safety in this league so let's get into it so round one 12th overall have the Green Bay Packers taken edge rusher out of Clemson Cleveland Farrell now the Packers biggest Achilles heel last year was the production that they had at that edge rush position and they didn't really have a lot of production there now in free agency they signed Preston Smith and Zadarius Smith were pretty solid, but Adam Cleveland Farrell will make a scary pass rushing core for the Green Bay Packers. He has a quick first step, and not only is a force as a pass rusher, but he's only he's all he's good as well in stopping the run. He has long arms, good hands, along with good strength, and is an effective bull rusher. Cleveland Farrell, guys, is just a complete package. He can do everything, complete player, and I expect him to be a candidate. For defensive rookie of the year this upcoming season and I don't think you can do any better than taking him and some people thought they might take Rashawn Gary I'm not really high on Rashawn Gary as with a lot of other people who have him dropping rapidly down in the first round and I don't think they should take the tight end this early on in the first round because it's three tight ends that you could select in the first round so what if TJ Hawkinson goes to somebody else before the 30th overall pick. I think Cleveland Farrell is a bigger need on that edge rushing position than a tight end. So, with their second first round pick, 30th overall in the first round, I have them taking a tight end Noah Font out of Iowa. Now, Noah Font, in my opinion, is the best tight end in his draft class. He's an incredible athlete, solid tight end. He clocked in a solid 40 time at 4-5. An absolute nightmare downfield with his former basketball background and his speed. He can stretch the field vertically. He gives safeties a hard time because of how big he is and his size. And he gives linebackers a big fit because of how fast he is. Not many linebackers can cover that kind of speed, even though we're starting to see a new breed of hybrid linebackers. But, I mean, the thing with these fast linebackers that can cover, oftentimes they're a little bit more smaller 
So they don't really have the size to guard these tight ends like Noah Font. So tight ends are still getting the better hand of these linebackers, despite what kind of linebackers are being matched up against them, hybrid or traditional linebackers. And off and also putting a safety on him. It's not too many safeties got that can cover in the NFL nowadays tight ends. So Noah Font. He would be a good addition to the Green Bay Packers because we all already know Jimmy Graham is declining. He's getting up there in age. He's slowing down. Not really the player that he used to be or was. And pretty much after this season, I expect him to retire. So give Green Bay drafting Noah Font gives Aaron Rodgers a much-needed weapon, a good vertical tight end that can stretch the field, and... I think this would be a pretty good pick with the 30th overall pick. I don't think you can do too much better with this pick. So, in the second round, 44th overall, had the Green Bay Packers taking offensive guard slash center out of Texas A&M, Eric McCoy. The Green Bay Packers need another offensive guard, which was their biggest need on the offense this offseason. They signed Billy Turner, and by drafting Eric McCoy, they fill another needed spot at the offensive guard position. And their number one priority this season should be trying to keep Aaron Rodgers upright because we already saw how Aaron Rodgers, he was playing the whole entire season last year, not 100%. So the Green Bay Packers, number one priority, would need to be to keep him upright. And getting Eric McCoy would, well, it wouldn't improve the offensive line a lot, but the offensive line is pretty much already solid. So letting Eric McCoy will feel well solidify the offensive line. I think with Eric McCoy on that offensive line, it should be pretty much top 15. Mm, I'll say it'll be around 11th, somewhere around that range when it comes to the top offensive lines in the National Football League with Eric McCoy because I think he's pretty good and I think he's highly underrated. So in the third round, 76 overall, had the Green Bay Packers taking a wide receiver. Andy Isabella out of UMass. Now, the Packers let Randall Cobb go, and now he's on the Dallas Cowboys. Andy Isabella has been very productive the last three seasons at UMass. He has great route running, great slot route receiver with good speed. And the best fits for Andy Isabella would be the New England Patriots and the Green Bay Packers. Those would pretty much be ideal fits with Aaron Rodgers there at playing quarterback. He should be able to get him involved pretty quickly and get him pretty acclimated with the Green Bay Packers because it's Andy Isabella, I feel, could have been a lot better at UMass. You know, he had he was pretty good with UMass, but I think their quarterback position wasn't really that good. Now imagine how much damage he can do in the NFL now with a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. And Andy Isabella reminds me a lot of Cooper Cup, but a lot faster the way that he runs his routes. Very good in the slot. It's just like he's just a natural born wide receiver. He, This guy, when he came out the wound, he was born to be a wide receiver. Everything is just natural with him. Now, the only downside is that he's only 5'8", but I mean, he's going to be playing slot. So, he's basically just going to be running these quick routes, quick slants and stuff like that. So, nothing really that he's going to have to worry about catching 50-50 balls. And I think the Green Bay Packers would be a great fit for him. In the fourth round, 115th overall, had the Green Bay Packers selecting cornerback out of Houston, Isaiah Johnson. Now, Green Bay has Jair Alexander, who was absolutely superb last season, and Josh Jackson, who was okay. The Green Bay Packers should look to add in one more corner, in my, opi in my opinion, to play that third cornerback's position, the slot corner or nickel corner, whatever they call it these nowadays. Now, Johnson is a great press corner. He has good size. He's 6'2", 208 pounds. He's a day one talent, but is probably one of the most inconsistent cornerbacks in this draft class, which is why he has a round four protection by many NFL scouts and executives. Now, at Green Bay, if he's able to have some consistent play, he should be able to become a very good corner and also help make that Green Bay secondary be very very good now round four 119th overall now I made a mistake with this pick I uh, I didn't mean to put him this high I meant to put him in round six but I have the Green Bay Packers taking linebacker Chase Hansen now I'm going to say this again I didn't mean to really put him this high but I mean he's on this video so I have to defend it 
Now, Jake Ryan left the free agency to join the Jacksonville Jaguars, so the Green Bay Packers have to find another linebacker to play alongside Blake Martinez, who is quietly becoming an elite linebacker. Now, I've seen a lot of Chase Hansen this past college football season, and I really, really like him. I mean, last college football season, he was severely underrated because of his size. He moved from safety to linebacker, and he was pretty good. He brings a lot to the table. He can play safety. He can play linebacker. He has great cover skills since he was a former defensive back. And he has a nose for the football. He was Pat 12. First team defense with 112 tackles. Had 22 tackles for loss, which was fifth in the nation. He also can cover tight ends and slot receivers man to man. And this pick that 90% of people is going to be considered a reach. But, I mean, I didn't mean to put him here. I did this on accident, but I had to defend it. And I think he's going to be a phenomenal player at the next level. I think he's going to be... A Pro Bowl caliber player. Yes, I have that much confidence in Chase Hansen. I think he is a very, very good linebacker, and he is going to be an absolute steal. Now, in round 551st overall, had the Packers taken safety out of Boston College, Lucas Dennis. Now, the Green Bay Packers signed Adrian Amos in free agency, but I feel they should they should still draft another safety just so they can have a reliable backup and for depth. Now, Lucas Dennis has good size for a safety. He also has great ball skills. His best season came in 2017 when he had seven interceptions. He can also play cornerback as well. Dennis will make for a good backup safety, and maybe they could move him to free safety and maybe experiment him at a couple of different positions. You can't really put him at nickel a lot unless you just want him to cover a tight end or something like that. But he won't be – he's not a safety that you can put in the box for run support or like a fifth linebacker or a fourth linebacker because he's not really a good tackler. He missed a lot of tackles this year. Now, round six, 186 overall. Have the Packers taking wide receiver Keyshawn Johnson at the Fresno State. Now he is a sleeper. He is a he. This guy is an absolute gem. The Packers need another wide receiver who can play the outside wide receiver position, the number two position, maybe number three if they go three wide. Sometimes I don't really think Keyshawn Johnson will be much of a good slot guy in the slot. I think he's better on the outside, but he was very underrated at Fresno State and has. Had a more productive college career at Fresno State than another Grim Bay Packer player, which is wide receiver Devontae Adams. And Devontae Adams was absolutely great at Fresno State. So if you're able to surpass his production, you have to be very, very good. Now, Fresno State's offense, they did pass the ball a lot, so his stats are a little bit inflated. But overall, he is a very good wide receiver. He has solid, solid size, good hands, very fluent with his cuts and breaks. And he can also make those 50-50 catches. But the most important trait that I like about him, which is why I have him going to the Grim Bay Packers, is that he always runs back to the quarterback to catch the ball, which is a trait that Aaron Rodgers likes to have in his wide receivers to always come back to the ball. Now, with the second six-round pick, 196 overall, have them taking quarterback Jordan Tamu out of Ole Miss University. Now, the Packers need a backup quarterback. I don't know if Deshaun, Johnson, uh, Deshaun Kaiser is a reliable option as of right now, but Jordan Tomlin has a big arm, solid accuracy, solid size, but his biggest flaw is his football IQ, which should improve over time the more reps he takes in practice and the more coaching and development that he has. Now, with their last pick of this year's NFL Draft, round seven, 228th overall, had him taking off as a guard out of Mississippi State, Deion Calhoun. Now, this guy should be a starter, and for some reason, a lot of people have him projected to go in the sixth and seventh round, despite saying that he can be a plug and play player. Don't really know a lot about him. I don't really know the backstory. I don't get how he's a starting caliber offensive guard, but yet people have him projected to go in the sixth and seventh round. So that's it for this seven round mock draft for the Green Bay Packers. Make sure to like the video and subscribe for more NFL content and videos. And thanks for watching.